All right, a couple more little odds and ends. The first one is meters that we're putting in circuits. Back at the beginning of this unit, I told you about two meters. I told you about a voltmeter, which is an instrument used to measure voltage across two points in a circuit. And I told you about ammeters, which are meters that are placed in a circuit to measure the current flowing through it. Okay, so if I were to draw a circuit, and uh, I'll make a series one here. Okay, we'll just put two in. We'll call this one R1, and we'll call this one R2. Maybe I'll start with the ammeter. Where would I put the ammeter in this circuit if I wanted to measure the current through R1? Well, my choices would be I could put it here before R1, I could put it between R1 and R2, I could put it over after R2. So where should I put it? Well, remember in series, all the I's are equal. So I1 is equal to I2 is equal to I total. So really, it matters absolutely not at all if I were to put it here, put it here, or put it here, because the current doesn't change in a series circuit. All of those three places would still allow me to measure the current through R1 because all the I's are the same. Now, what if I had a parallel circuit? And I still wanted to measure the current through R1. Now, where do I put my ammeter? And does it matter? Well, if I were to put my ammeter here, that would measure the total current, right? Because it hasn't split yet. That wouldn't give me the current through R1. If I were to put it here, the current has split now, but really it's in. I'm putting it in the branch with R2, so the current that it would be reading would be what's flowing through R2. To measure the current going through R1, I have to put it on the branch with R1, and I could put it before or after, not set in the way that I was drawing it. Okay, it could go either here or here. Because again, in in series the eyes are the same. So even though this circuit is a parallel circuit, my ammeter must always be in series with the circuit element that I want to measure the current through because in series the current's the same. Okay? Makes sense? So where every so if I were to put my ammeter up here, this would be measuring R2, because this one and this one are in series with R2. So an ammeter must be in series with the circuit element that you're trying to measure the current through. Now how about a voltmeter? Well when is voltage the same? Voltage is the same when the two items are parallel. So if I want to get my voltage across R1, then I need to attach my voltmeter in such a way that it's parallel to R1. So I need to run a wire up from one side and then back down to the other. Now the current will split here and the two voltages will be the same. If I want to know the voltage in R2, again, I would need to put it parallel. Over here, again, I would need to put my voltmeter in parallel for R2 or R1. Remember, in parallel, voltages are the same. So a voltmeter must go in parallel. Okay? So that's the first little factor we needed to finish up. The second little factor is lots of you have things at home that have more than one battery in them. What happens when you have multiple power supplies in a circuit? Well, it depends on how they're hooked up. You can hook your power supplies up 
in series like this or in parallel okay so what happens if they're hooked up in series well what happens if they're hooked up in series suppose that each of these are 1.5 volts when you hook them up in series then your total voltage is just going to be 7.5 it so when you hook power supplies up in series they give you overall more voltage for the circuit but if you hook, hook them up in parallel that's not the case even if these are both 1.5 volts when they when the electrons go to run through this circuit like down here the all the electrons have to pass through each one of these because they're in series but here as the electrons return from this resistor they have a choice they could either go across this way and pick up 1.5 volts or they could da go down and cross this one and pick up 1.5 volts either way they get 1.5 volts there's no way they can get three like they can't go down here and swing around because they'd be going against the battery okay so we, when we so what's the point if they're only going to get 1.5 volts why hook up in parallel I'm pausing to give you a chance to think about it but the point is when they're hooked up in parallel it results in longer life for the battery because it's only working half as hard because the other half of the current is going through the other battery so this would be handy in like safety devices and things like that where you want longer life for your batteries that you don't have to be changing the batteries all the time whereas this would be like maybe your remote control or um, any of the for your television or any of those things that take multiple batteries because they need more voltage than just what one would um, offer. Okay, so that's multiple power supplies. One last thing is that there are two famous rules. They're called Kirchhoff's. One is Kirchhoff's loop rule, and the other is Kirchhoff's junction rule. And Kirchhoff was a German a German physicist. Okay, maybe since I'm writing here, the junction rule is really we've been we've actually been using both of these all along. The junction rule says no, excuse me, it's the loop rule. That's why I was should have start wrote it first. The loop rule says as you go around the loop and you count the voltage that a power supply is putting in as positive and you count the voltage that the resistors are taking out as negative as you go around the loop you need to get back to zero when you get back to the beginning of the loop well so what this is saying is V total minus V1 minus V2 has to equal zero we've we said the first time we wrote a series circuit down we wrote V1 is V total is equal to V1 plus V2 we've really been using Kirchhoff's loop rule Right? If the battery puts in uh, 20 volts, then between R1 and R2, they have to take out 20 volts. That's the loop rule. The junction rule says that the current flowing into a junction has to be equal to the current flowing out of it. So let's suppose that we have 8 amps flowing into this junction. Well, if we know 3 amps is going to R2, then we can figure out how many amps must be going to R1. It's higher order math, but I bet you're getting five. It's what we said when we said I total will be equal to I1 plus I2 plus however many other I's when we were doing our parallel circuit, right? So all it's saying is whatever's flowing into a junction has to come out of a junction. Now the one that seems to mess people up is if I said okay there's 8 amps going in here and there's 3 amps going in here and there's 14 amps coming out what must be flowing through this part well we have 11 going in and 14 coming out so there needs to be another 3 going in so 14 can come out 